We got a, we got a few minutes. So. Okay. We're not live tonight. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. We're not. No. It's recorded, but we're not live. Live from New York City. Come on. Now. Live from New York Everybody. City. It's Monday night. Yeah, this isn't the first show, you know. You know. I could just I'm think of something distracted otherwise, right? Yeah, that's, a, that's fine. Yeah. I normally add an, another appendage on this particular yeah. guy. Yeah. No. Oh, oh, for the God. sanctity God. of God. City of Hall, yeah. I leave him you better, you neutral. Probably, you probably should. Who's the light? Yeah, because the music. it should be neutral. Yeah. Yeah, it's only closed session stuff that I draw that oh. on. Oh. And the board. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So sorry, my bad. My my downfall. Do some change clothes. The chief, like. He wants us to go. Is it six now? Okay, okay. Now we will call the meeting to order. Aaron, would you do the roll call? Mary. Here. Dashlet. Here. Gore. Here. Wayne Schmidt. Here. Swedberg. Here. Meverden. Here. Ortlieb. Here. Kevin Schmidt. Here. Okay. This meeting is in compliance with the open meeting law. I'd like um, a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Who got? Opposed? Hearing none. The agenda is approved as written. Um, approval of the meeting minutes to the May 16th meeting. So moved. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the minutes are approved from the May meeting. Okay, consideration of, of bills. Um, does anybody have any questions about any of the bills that were submitted? Uh, I mean, I have to find it. Nothing. Could I get a motion to approve them? Hang on, I think we have a question. Oh, okay. No, I now I have to find it. I had it for the uh, fire chief. Go on, I'll. Uh, was I'll it maybe with the med center stuff? No, it no. was with the fire chief. I think it was on the uniform. It, it, are we trying to utilize all the yeah. leftover ones that, uh, and this was one that didn't fit, I take it? So then do we just send it off or do we get a brand new one? Do we have it tailored to fit? The jacket and everything was okay. She needed a shirt that was for tailored. So yeah. she needed a dress shirt and a belt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That's all I have there. Okay. Okay, if there are no other questions, could I get a motion to approve payment of the bills? So moved, Madam Mayor. Second. Make a roll call on that. Maverdin. Yes. Kevin Schmidt. Yes. Bachelet. Yes. Mary. Yes. Wayne Schmidt. Yes. Four. Yes. Ortley. Yes. Swedberg. Yes. Okay, that motion passes. Next item is conference attendance for the Chief of Police. Um, Already he's running away for Christ's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> I made a motion to approve it. <laughs> Second. Would you do a roll call on that? Wayne Schmidt. Yes. Four. Yes. Swedberg. Yes. Kevin Schmidt. Yes. Nearing. Yes. Ortley. Yes. Dashlet. Yes. Meverden. Yes. Okay, that carries. Okay, next item, public comment. Is there anyone from the public that would like to come forward and talk to the council about anything? May I make a comment, please? I would like to uh, thank uh, the M EMS and uh, fire department and first responders uh, for their outstanding service uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. My wife was very appreciative of it. And I don't know whether you guys get thanked enough, but uh, I want to give you an okie dokie.
Okay, is, is there anyone from the audience that wants to come forward and say anything? Last chance, anybody wanting to come forward? If not, then we'll move off of public comment to old business. Is there anything for old business? There is not. There's not at this time, Madam okay. Mayor. Okay, then new business. Then the first topic is the mayor's appointment to the utility commission. Uh, we have three very qualified people that would like to take that position. Two of them are here um, sitting in the audience right now. Um, we have Bob Junio and Sylvan Conkel. Um, and then John Cross is also interested. Um, does anybody have any questions that you would like to ask either one of those people or want to make any comments? If not, I would like a motion for one of them. I would like to make a motion for Bob Junior, Bob's been a member of this community for a long, long time and has served the community well. Uh, he and his wife have both been very active in the community and this would be a, a very good position for him. So I'll, I'll, I'll like to point him. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Are, are there any other nominations for the Utility Commission? Well, as I was as I was looking, I, you know, I definitely agree that Bob's qualified, but I also think that John Cross, with his past experience, is qualified too. So, I, you know, I'd like to make a motion for him too. But I, okay. again, whatever everybody decides, but I think they're both very qualified okay. for the okay. position. So, okay, is there a second for John? I'll Cross? second that. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Since we have a third, <laughs> are there any other nominations? Any other? Okay, then we will close nominations, and then I, because it's two and two, you know, two for each, votes for each, I would like to do a roll call on, on who the council thinks. And if it ends up being a tie, I will decide and break the tie, but ho hopefully you have something in mind already, so, okay. Okay, give me just a moment here. Okay, since John, Ortlieb, one second, I just want to make sure I have this correct. John Ortlieb, Second by seconded Ward. by Casey. So we'll start with um, Bob Junio. Okay, Ortlieb. Yes. Kevin Schmidt. No. Swedberg. No. Gore. Yes. Dashlet. No. Mary. No. Wayne Schmidt. No. Meberden. No. Okay, and then we have Cross, which was made by Midge, Midge and seconded by Dashlet. Dashlet. Yes. Ortlieb. No. Four. No. Mary. Yes. Wayne Schmidt. Yes. Swedberg. Yes. Meverden. Yes. And Kevin Schmidt. Yes. Okay, so it looks like the yeses go to John Cross for the Utility Commission appointment. Okay, could you, could you say the vote louder? I don't know if they necessarily heard you in back. <laughs> Bob Junio had one, two, three, four, five, six noes to two yeses. John Cross had one, two, three, four, five, six yeses to two noes. John Cross is being recommended as the next appointment to the Utility Commission. Okay, and then uh, the next item on the agenda is the police officer posting. I'll, I'll just speak to that. And the, the chief is here too and talking. Um, we will be going out and posting again, looking for, um, we're probably gonna be about five, four to five months away, um, but we would like to post um, for another officer just because the time it's going to involve in taking. Um, but at least put our name, I guess, back out there on the map. We talked about this at the PPP. Um, it is still not decided that, and the fire chief is still trying to find his, his feet on the floor here, and, and or, I'm sorry, the police chief, I apologize. Um, you know, how things are gonna work, and if we are actually for sure gonna hire another person, um, obviously there's some part-time things that we're looking at possibly doing as well, and looking into um, an MOU with the county, kind of like what the surrounding uh, city of Kiwani and village of Luxembourg has done, where they're using the county uh, police department, paying them a part-time wage 
um, of $30 an hour and um, use it so they would drive up here in their own personal vehicle and they would use our wear our uniform and operate under the Algoma Police Department unlike now like the when I say using the county it wouldn't be fulfilling the county shifts like they currently are doing is this an eligibility list? This is more or less would in? be an eligibility list. If we feel like there's somebody qualified, um, the fire chief, or I'm sorry, Dave, the police chief, <laughs> they look so much sorry to the, to the fire chief, Tom, I apologize. Uh, the police chief, we would then set up an interview, bring them in, you know, kind of look at, see how that, that whole process is going to go. Um, we're talking with Tom Schrank, myself and Dave on the last week and a half here. Um, the state of Wisconsin right now currently last week is looking for 1,000 police officers throughout the state of Wisconsin, um, that there is a shortage. 50% uh, or better of the 2024 graduates are already spoken for and have jobs and under contract um, with other agencies throughout the state. Um, and a lot of these other agencies are, are paying for their last year of school. Um, mm. Not saying that we can't get a good police officer, but the, like the top 50, 55 percent of uh, NWTC class that's going to graduate in 2024 already have full-time jobs. So we feel like at this time, like, you know, we have to, instead of waiting, kind of keep the, the doors open here and see what we can come up with. So you need a motion to go ahead and I like a motion establishing that, an eligibility that we would go out Yes, and, okay. and I'll make that motion, Madam Mayor. Okay. okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. <laughs> so obviously it, when we get down to it, it would come back to the right. finance and personnel if, you know, how that progresses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was that, was that still a part of the, that officer, was that already actually in the budget for this year? There was, was that there not? was not. It, so what we did is we built 50% of uh, of a full-time officer in the 2023 budget to pay for thinking that we were going to use about 50% of funding from the school district and 50% of funding from city funds, from general funds, and have an SRO officer, um, a school resource officer. Since <coughs> right now we are not moving forward with that, um, we're looking at what we can do to fill these these open shifts so but you have about 50 percent in the budget it is budgeted in 2023 so if you would hire somebody in august or september you'd have enough to carry that out to the end of the year into budget time to look yep. at okay. you know how we would budget for that going into the 2024 yeah. fiscal year okay uh, we have a motion and a second um uh, uh, um, I guess a question a question that I have is just uh, it, it uh, uh, scheduling isn't that going to isn't that going to present a scheduling issue with uh, uh, if we have somebody in a part time capacity like that uh, that is uh, that is going to be on the Kiwani or the Sheriff's Department uh, coming up here balancing that schedule to what we have open so in our schedules how, how to, is that to going talk to a little bit about that Jake so you're talking about how would we do this MOU yes with the union so yeah. what would happen is the police chief would fill out a schedule right our schedule there's gaps in our schedule right now somebody takes vacation um, somebody there's something going on um, guys have training the police chief at that time will you know at the beginning of the month say these are my open shifts for the month okay right. and then we'll allow um anybody from the county that wants to sign up okay. for those right. shifts so it isn't a specific officer it is it not would be any officer that wants it, to sign up for it just well, like what we were doing now part of the mou i believe that the the county has to have so many years of experience is that what it is kevin um, with robins it's different it's think how this goes if you have over 10 years experience like me it's $30 an hour if it's something to five it's maybe 25 and then it's maybe 27 but anybody with 10 years at more they're paying 30 for the 10 year guys so guys okay. like me with 23 you're getting $30 an hour Robin puts out a schedule this is what's open for shifts and we can take four hour shifts we can take eight hour shifts it's just she hired five of us and there's five of us that work QI and it's the same five it's always the same five as their part-time we get uniforms, you get 
everything like a regular officer. Just like when Lee was part-time. Except you're using other officers that are already working the job, so you don't have training, you don't have you have experience. And yep. It's a win-win for Kiwani okay. so far. All right. Well, what? Uh, how about how about liability, workman's comp, all of those? That's what the MOU. Is. That's part of the MOU. Yeah. Okay. So that is something that, if, when we get to that, we will bring that in front of everybody. Um, the council will get a chance to look at it, but that is part of the MOU. Um, obviously, I don't like to talk about this, but it's something that the council needs to be brought to light about. Let's say Kevin is working in Kiwani as a county deputy but now he's working for the city of Kiwani um, as part of that you know he's getting thirty dollars an hour he has his own vehicle he's wearing a Kiwani uniform if he's involved in an officer involved shooting working for Kiwani and he has to be on paid administrative leave the city of Kiwani the same thing that we would be adopting that liability to take yeah. that on to, to pay that wage um, well, he's off. So it wouldn't be on the county's back. Okay. Now, uh, 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 interesting conundrum there, then. Kevin, if you were involved in that scenario with the city of Kiwani, does that apply to the sheriff's department? Can you go back to the sheriff's department and The work? only way any of us would do it for the city of Kiwani is if we did the MOU because we're in the same union. Nobody wants to be part time anymore and not have the protection. No, no, no. That, that wasn't, that wasn't my question. That. If you were. If you were uh, uh, working as for the city of Kiwani in a Kiwani uniform and yeah. involved in a shooting, and you and you had to take the the obligatory time off. Do you have to take the time off for the sheriff's department as well? Yes. 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 Not necessarily okay. the whole amount. Like when our guys had the shooting, I think they were off like three months. But the people that were in the shooting from Kiwani City, which were in the same shooting. They only were off like five weeks, but they didn't actually do that. It, it depends. Yeah, I mean that's really and hard to who's, say. Who's that pulling the trigger? Situation where there's involvement, eyes. and obviously the union steps yeah. in at that time and says, you know, they might say, you know, Kevin, you're going to be off for some time, but he might be on administratively, you know, right. put on it, like an administrative desk task or right. something like that too. I think what Jake's alluding to is <coughs> you can't double dip. You can't be no, on an administrative leave for the city and then go back to work. No, no, he right? would not be, and that's what yeah. the county wants as part of this MOU <coughs> is right. to make it's, sure it's, that he's covering co covering all of the bases. Yeah. Yeah. He's not getting it from the city and the county. Or no, if he's you not. You get hurt and you're wrestling with a mentally challenged person, and you get hurt and you're disabled and can't go back to work ever again. Then you get disability through the state of Wisconsin through a disability as a law enforcement officer. Or now, if a part-time officer gets hurt, they're 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 done. They don't get anything. Nope. They have no nothing. Correct. They shoot somebody, they get no protection. Like my union will protect me if I have to shoot somebody and all that. We pay an extra rider in our union. To do okay. That. The the pro to this, and I I don't want to get long-winded here because this is something a topic <coughs> that will come back here. The pro to it is, is right now we're hiring a part-time person. We're spending about $3,500 to $4,000 in trying to train them, give them a uniform, which we would still have to do that for anybody else, the uniform part, but the hours wage, and then they're going to work here for two months and they get a full-time job. Yeah. And everything that you just spent on training just benefited another municipality or another law enforcement agency. Correct. With that being said, they can come back around and maybe that you know we hire somebody full time that's part time somewhere else too. But you have so. that same category in the fire department too, where you spend a dollar on them and then you train them all and then they go full time yeah. and go somewhere else. So I mean that's a crapshoot all the way around on it. It's but you got to do something. Yeah. So. Are there any other questions? Nope. Because we have a motion and a second, we don't need a roll call. And that's no. Okay. Not hiring anybody. No. No. All in the, favor. The, the thing with it is, is like WileyNet and the other Wisconsin job postings, they only let you post for 30 days. So we can have it on our website, but like where most people look to get a job is WileyNet. So this would allow us to continue to post on there. So we would continue to still look on WileyNet. Up motion a second. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that motion is approved. 
Okay, next item, the capital improvement plan. Is that Amber <coughs> that's talking? Sure. Don't go up to my spot. Yeah, it probably would be better for microphone, huh? Wrong Robin. Thanks, Matt. Okay, next item, Okay, so before you is the new five-year capital improvement plan, or I should say updated five-year capital improvement plan. This runs from 2023 to 2027. The vast majority of items listed in 2023 were already approved as part of the budget process last fall. There have been a couple of small changes. Um, if you remember, not even a month ago, I think it was, the council approved some additional chip sealing work to be done this year. So that is in the capital improvement plan. It is not yet in the budget. We'll take care of that with the budget amendment towards the end of the year. When you get to, so in 2023, you'll see descriptive pages for each and every task that we're planning on doing this year. That kind of gives you the background and detail on what it is we're doing and why we're doing it. Then you get on to 2024 through 2027. These are just estimates. Uh, 2024 is a fairly decent estimate. We're probably gonna move some of that stuff around. One of the prime examples of things that are gonna get moved around is the fire truck. We've been kind of planning to replace that, but we're kind of holding tight on it to see what we can do with maybe a new building. If we order a fire truck now with our existing building, we have to pay additional charges to special order that truck to fit in our building. So if we can figure out a way to get a new building built, then we would hold off and and purchase a truck without those special adjustments because it costs quite a bit of extra money. So 24 through 27 is more of an estimation, especially when you get to 25, 26, 27. That's kind of just throwing the dart at the wall and see what, what we've got out there that we need to consider. The, I got a question. Is these for 2024? Yep. If we decided not to do anything and just took that three million and built our fire station, we effectively look one year without doing this other stuff. So if you look on the very front cover page that has all the years across on the bottom section, 2024, the geo debt is actually $300,000. So you, you're only using $300,000 in loan dollars. The rest is coming from grants or money from other funds. So you would be, I, I don't think you could do it without borrowing the full amount. Hey, go, let me just, I got, I got a question when going back on 23, what was approved, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I need some clarification. The library, yep. we give them X amount of dollars as part of their budget, correct? Each year. Part of their operating, correct. And, and, the, and the county does the same. Yes. When it comes to improvements, is that our responsibility then to put the carpeting and the and the furniture and stuff like that? It is a city-owned building. So does there the county give us anything for utilizing that building? The county will not give us any money towards capital. They only pay for operating. And they pay a lot less than we do when it comes to operating. Mm, I think it's probably seventy-five percent. They, so the way the county figures out how much they give to each library, there's two libraries in the county, Kiwani and Algoma. They take the operating budget for Algoma and the operating budget for Kiwani, they add them together and 50% goes to us and 50% goes to Kiwani. So then who funds the, the library that's in the bank in Luxembourg? That's, that comes from last year. That, you fund yeah. that in Luxembourg? Well, we don't fund it, but it's part of Well, they must pay rent or something, right, yeah. to, to utilize it. That's the only cost involved in that. So it's just our time sending items there. And the delivery costs, which uh, in Kiwani County helps pay for that, they do. So it, it, it's our obligation then to provide the building. If, yes. let me ask you, I, I'm just throwing this out. If for some reason, let's just say that we come into some money and we are able to put up a building. Mm -hmm. And if we'd only have enough money to do the police department and city hall. Is it our obligation then to provide space for the library? That would be a decision of the council. The of the library council is a or department of the city. Okay. They are a department, just like anything else. Okay. So it would be the council's decision if you wanted to cut the library or continue to fund them. Okay. 
Uh, it's just a question I've got, so, yeah. all right. Yeah, they aren't a separate entity. They are part of the city. It's okay. just like just, the fire department. Just like the utility department. is a part of the city. Yep. And, okay. Yep. Okay. And then, Matt, what we've got budgeted in the 2023 for Marina, we talked to, that's probably going to be about a million dollars short, huh? Yes. I mean, it's really hard to say right now. Um, there's some grants that are becoming available for, for PFAS dredging um, in open water space, but I can't, obviously, grants, we can't speak to them until we have them secured as well. Mm -hmm. But and, and until we have something nailed down that we're continuing to work through, um, rough dollars it, to clean the PFAS up, we probably are going to add about a million dollars to this project. And I'm using a large number instead of, you know, telling you that it's going to be 400,000. Great. But but this, this capital is only a projection. Correct. We still have to decide how we're going to spend yeah. the money. The amount that's in there for the marina, the 467, is based on the bids received. Yeah, that is correct. So there's additional information that came to light after that. So that'll be a, a decision further down the road. So we're going to have to come up with it. it. Let's just say it, it adds an additional 500000 not a million. We still have to then come up with that other 500000 Correct. That is correct. So then we would be having a further discussion of how do we come up with that? Do we cut other projects? Do we go out and borrow a little more? What do we do? Because what you're looking at here when you're going out 24, 25, 27, these are only projections. Correct. That's correct. Um, you know, you talk about the fire trucks. Um, well, I'm not in favor of buying a truck now until I get a new station because, like you said, you've got to go out and you've got to have it tailor-made, which costs us how much extra dollars than we did the ladder truck. Mm -hmm. So How much? 20? Yeah. About 20 percent more. So, 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 so that 800 turns into a million bucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. But that's something and, that the community is going to have to think about. And actually, that 800,000 is probably on the low end now. Oh, that that was a good number a couple of years ago. Truck is over a million, over a million right. I would say. Yep. Okay. Our okay, last thanks, on seven fifty. Thank you. Okay, does anybody else have any other questions? Any other question? And then you would like a motion to approve this plan? Or rec recommend to council for approval. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then All it's right. on your special council agenda. So this is, uh, I guess, uh, 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 before we Obviously, uh, our budget on 23 is, is pretty well established. We've got to do some jiggering on the books with the chip yep. ceiling moving from 24 to 23. Yeah. Uh, but what you're looking for is just an okie dokie on projections, not uh, uh, on monuments. The whole thing. On the whole thing we need. So when we go out to borrow <coughs> for capital improvements, we tell the, the bond market, Anything that is in our five-year capital improvement is what we can spend that borrowed dollars on. So that, that's why we amend it every year and update it, because now we know what we're going to be spending those dollars on. If we don't amend the whole project, whatever was listed in 23 from last year's plan is the only thing we can spend those bond dollars on. Okay. So, so, our, so the motion really should, should, should require, at this point, an amendment uh, of that additional 750 or whatever for the marina, right? No. It should not at this oh. time. Does, no. It doesn't matter this, no. at this point. Because, I, and I know this isn't going to happen, but if those if the water in the lake comes up two feet, yeah, we're not going to dredge. Right. Right. Right? If, if it plateaus now and we don't have to dredge, right now as long as that stays where it is below in the water, we don't have to deal with it. We could also get prices and it comes back at just pie in the sky, $1.5 million. This body has the right to say, we can't it. open and operate our marina because we don't have $1.5 million to dredge. So so could I'm not saying that's what I want to happen. I'm just, those are, you know, all possibilities. And, and a resolution isn't binding anyway. It is not. So if there's something with the 2024 that I'm questioning, that it doesn't have to necessarily be questioned now then? Because I'm looking at, well, I'm looking at Olson Park in particular, and that's $20,000. That's something that certainly can be pushed back because there's 
we haven't, yep. there's just nothing in the funds for that right now, right? So is there other things, Is or is that really, that'll come up again well, later or what? I think now would be a good time if there's anything the council sees in 2024 that they would like to direct the department heads to either put off or find other funding for because we're going to be starting the budget process very, very soon here. So this is the time, and maybe you take it up at your committee level with the, like for Olson Park, the Parks and Rec Committee maybe can take that up and decide is it something we really want to do, and then they can recommend it to council. But if the council as a whole looks at this and says, you know what, no, scratch that, don't even plan to do it next year, we, that's most certainly you can do that. So the Perry Field then, is that, you're talking about redoing the, the tennis courts? That would be the big thing. Yeah, yeah. So you're just black topping? Are you looking at, at changing it to pickleball stuff? Or are you We're just looking at... We're talking about changing it to positive pickleball because the tennis courts don't already utilize. And then maybe expanding the basketball court. Um, there's a couple different options of how to surface it. They make different things, but mm -hmm. um, some are out of pricing, some aren't so much. But it's all stuff that's kind of looking into that. Trying to turn your computer to read this. I know it keeps turning. Okay. Okay. And you actually have a, a mo motion and, and a second so far, right? I don't have a motion or a second. Oh, okay. Okay. Is there a motion to go forward with this plan, capital improvement plan? Any motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Who seconded it? We. Okay, and then would you do a roll call on that? So um, Casey is recommending approval of the 2023 through 2027 capital improvement plan to the city council for final approval. Yes, please. And that was seconded by Lee? Yes. All right, roll call. Swedberg. I still have issues with some of the smaller things, so I'm going to say no. I'm looking forward to the in the future. Kevin Schmidt. I'm still looking. It's hard to read. Yeah. Do you want to pack it? Gus, the, the hundred and fifty thousand for radios is that dependent on what the county does? Yes. And and we and I think we kind of touched on six oh five, simply because of the station. Correct. So those are two things that yep. in or out. That, that radio yeah. thing is probably looking at a new system. You know, hopefully we're lucky like the last time. You know, yeah. when they came up with a ton of grant money to replace everything in you know, under grant funds. Mm -hmm. Carpeting that bad in the library and the hallway here? It doesn't look bad in the pocket. You got to well, talk, you got to talk up a little bit. The, car the carpeting in our hall, the city hall, yeah. has been done. Oh, it's so That's completely that good. Good. That's <laughs> the yeah. 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 Just, just a Quick point of clarification there. We're, uh, when we get to our budgeting workshop and actually yep. going through the budgeting, that's the time, we, I mean, just because we right. approve this right now, if we see something that we say no, for 24. You gotta take it out? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. We're, we're, we're gonna do this yeah. every year anyway. Yeah, in fact, no, we're, we're going to be amending this <coughs> hopefully no, in six yes. months. It's, it's only it a took projection. a little bit longer this year because yeah. of the change in staffing and um, department heads were kind of moving stuff around and didn't get everything back to me right away, so. I just, I wanna, put, I don't mean to be a stickler, but we are kind of in the middle of a roll call. Yeah. So yes. I don't know if we should be following back question. and forth. I'll call the question. I'll call the question. Wait, what? I make call a motion to call a question. Oh, I'm calling okay. a question. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. But yes, I apologize. I just, we're in the middle of a roll call, so I. No, and, and I think 
Midge, in defense of what you're looking at, I agree, but we're not locking ourselves in on anything right. here. No, so. All right, so back yeah. to roll call. Kevin? Yes. Dashlet? Yes. Mary? Yeah. Did you say yes or no? <laughs> yes. Meverden? Yes. Wayne Schmidt? Yes. Or? Yes. Ortlieb? Yes. All right, the yeses have it seven to one. And the next yeah. item is a CDC grant distribution for the Oklahoma Chamber of Commerce <coughs> in the park. Do you all have that in your packet? That was a recommendation that came from the committee that Casey chairs for the Algoma Area Chamber of Commerce. Casey, did you want to explain it? Yeah, it's it? it's a yearly. It's actually on our on our financial report. We have a, a separate line that's dedicated for the concert in the park series. So it's. It's kind of earmarked in the budget outside of our normal grant application. They ask for it yearly. Um, this year, uh, the, the concert series is going to be similar to how it was, except they're expending every, every week is three hours versus two hours. Um, uh, there's you know a multitude of, of area businesses that contribute towards it. They had come and asked for 2000 which is the standard that they have been asking from us. Um, there's opportunities for nonprofits. Uh, to, to vend drinks and food down there, um, but it's you know it's an event that brings out a lot of people. It's a very popular event, and uh, so the committee uh, unanimously unanimously uh, recommended it to to be approved. Okay. I'll make what a motion? We that. I'll second it. What? Uh, okay. Do you want to do a roll call on that? He's got a question. Jake has a question. Um, And this two thousand dollars is is for what? Uh, uh, well, there's money going toward the promotion bands, um, mostly. I mean, a lot of, of the bulk of the bulk of what the cost of of doing those concert is is the, the fees for, for the bands. individual bands. Okay. And and over the last few years, they've been getting uh, like a, a pretty wide swath of national acts to you know like. Where it's a lot of interesting, different original music. You know, they have your your standards, your your big mouth, who always comes around. But they've been attracting kind of a wider, uh, more varied kind of net of of people. And so okay. there's a lot of the cost ends up in in artists, uh, musicians. All right. And as part of the CBC budget package, like this is one of the lines. On well, no, I was just I, would, I I guess I guess my. Um, I'm, I'm not uh, opposed to that. My, my thinking, however, is that uh, the city is the city charging them for the use of the park? No, because they pay the utility. So we do have a fee implemented that we do charge for that park and we charge, but because the chamber pays the electrical bill at um, Legion Park we kind of swap that they don't pay for concert in the park or to use it for shanty days weekend. Okay. Right. So, and, and just a, a point of clarification so everybody understands is um, the CDC funding that, that this is budgeted under is not general fund money. Right. This is accommodation hotel motel tax that has to go back into tourism related events. Okay. Right. Thank you, Matt. All right. So. All right, well, yeah. Yep, it, this isn't general fund dollars. Mine's simple. The uh, the schedule, you said six to nine, it, it's going from two to three. Was it, Did it used to be six to eight? Or I, is I it think it was seven, seven to nine. Seven, seven to nine. nine, yeah. Oh, so we're starting oh, hour early. hour earlier. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, yeah. cool, good. Do they share the bands? Like, like Sturgeon Bay has it, so does Kiwani and that. I mean, do they, so that they don't pay for travel fees? No, they, no. they do their own, they make their own list out. The okay. chamber contacts them. Uh, Red from Red's Rock and Shore, yeah. she's in charge of getting all the entertainment okay. and stuff. And she has that background, so she lines them all up. Sure, no problem. Thanks, man. I'm not against it, I think it's great. No, it's good, I yeah. mean, it draws a lot of people. It I does. Mean, there is. It does. Okay. Thanks, Casey. Yeah. All right, Thank you. any more discussion on it? Did you want a roll call? Yeah, yeah do a roll call. Sure. Meverden? Yes. Ortlieb? Yes. Dashlet? Yes. Swedberg? Yes. Work? Yes. Wayne Schmidt? Yes. Kevin Schmidt? Yes. Mary? Yes. 
Okay, and we'll pass it. Next item is short term rental revamp. So this is just a kind of a question that I have. I'm not looking for a motion. I'm looking for, um, and, and we can talk about this for four hours, um, but Air, Airbnb, VRBO, short-term rental is becoming a huge growing thing here in the city of Algoma. Um, leaps and bounds. Um, the last we actually kind of did a survey and a drive through the city, I think we had 47 of them. I think we're close to just over 100 now um, in the city. Houses are coming for sale. They're selling in five, six days um, from people from out of the state. And um, they're, they have no relationship into the city of Algoma, but for they're gonna just VRBO this. My question is because there's so much to talk about and it's so in depth, does the, the full council want to set aside a special day to have a meeting? Um, or do we want to put it on a finance and personnel? It's, it could get quite in depth. It could be a, a 10 minute conversation. It could be a three hour conversation. So just, to, I mean, if, if somebody's, I know it's, we're in the summer months here. Um, we're not looking to implement anything next week but do we want to do that as part of a, a special meeting or how, how does the council feel about it? Can we do an ad hoc committee? Um, it, it's kind of been through that and now you get to the, to the nuts and bolts of what needs to be done and start to really lay down the baselines of what the council wants. See all of them up in Door County, and they just went through the whole thing, yeah. especially like Sturgeon Bay. I was keeping up with them. Myself and, and the clerk have yeah. sent something out now twice on um, clerk's list, and we get back. I mean, it's they're all over the place. There's people that are charging 75 dots, municipalities that that charge 75 dollars a month. There's municipalities that are, or I'm sorry, a year for a permit. There's municipalities that are up to three, four hundred dollars. Per residence for a permit I mean it, it's it, there's some of them that are saying okay we have 32 of them that's where we're stopping we're not allowing any more if somebody breaks part of the ordinance they're done they no longer have one then we'll allow somebody else um, they, I mean it's so there is no license right now huh? there is a license the, right the city the does city. not does currently not have, have no currently have a there license. is uh, municipalities um, very fastly are starting to adopt yeah licensing to put in, in, some well in, in, at, at this point if, if we've got over 100 isn't that cat out of that bag I mean, you know well, if you limit it to 30 uh, and you've got over 100 how do you do is, that is what is this body's wishes are you you know are you maybe you're okay with the airbnbs and as many of them that there are and 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 that's that's fine but maybe do you want a permit do you want a permit fee do you want a license um do you want to limit it to how many we can have? Are they paying tax? You know, do, do some are, some aren't. Do we have a handle on who's paying taxes and who isn't? Yeah, That's well. the tricky part with Airbnb and VRBO and HomeAway. We get a check once a quarter and it's just a check. And you can call there as many times as you want. You cannot get a breakdown of who that funding is collected from. So we've been asking them to submit their quarterly reports, but I, I can guarantee you that they're not. We don't have them. anything that says they have to either. What's can the can we? Cons why, are, why would I be against these, and why would I be for these? I guess. Well, people there's. Are buying the houses. So we're yep. Houses. Yep. But we have no houses to sell to people that want to live here. What about people that want to, let's say, the public school hires a new teacher, right. and they want to move their family into the city, and they're going up more or less competitively about buying a house. Um, and, and the market is fantastic right now, don't get me wrong, but they want to bring maybe a young family into the city and there's not a place for them to buy a house. So this is eliminating their city it, to Well, it's not eliminating them. It's, you know, it, another thing is, is that a lot of municipalities are looking at is we have a lot of houses um, that are Airbnb in these places in residential neighborhoods. And right now we don't have anything that says they can't be in their backyard having a bonfire at one o'clock in the morning, Tuesday morning, unless they're getting too loud. Um, is that what we want in our residential neighborhoods? 
this is an opportunity to raise revenue. There's so an op three hundred dollars a year, four hundred dollars a year for it a is. license so to have it per have year, and you got a hundred units. That's a lot of money. Accommodation tax. tax funding. Yeah. You know what I mean? what yeah, it's not yeah. general fund. Do they do they fall in the guidelines right now of a motel? No. They're no. separate. They're totally mm -hmm. separate. Now was it Ash Wabalon that just they passed an ordinance where you can't just rent by the day? Yeah. I think they have a seven day minimum. Seven day part minimum. Of Ash Wabalon's yeah. where you have to rent it for seven days. There's I mean there's also communities where there's either subdivisions that bar it. I mean. To answer your original question, do we need to have a separate meeting or add it on to a finance? I, I don't know. I, I think we could probably get it whacked out in an hour or less. I would F certainly in a finance. Hope. So yeah. Uh, just yeah. I mean, why try to figure yeah. out another meeting? And, okay. I, I just would be curious on how much information we can get prior to that meeting. We have like that, a that stack you this thick, mm -hmm. and like Matt said, it is all over. It is all across the board. Yes. We have it. Yes, we charge fees. No, we outlaw it. I mean, it is. Can just can you, Aaron? I know I know you guys are really busy, but is there a way like you did with the thing on the hydrant rental where you kind of listed out kind of like a baseline, baseline together and, that you can and look try at to get say, through? Here's some of the ideas that we could consider rather than trying to reinvent instead of bringing just a stack of every yeah. municipality's ordinances and say here you go. Try to kind of lay it out yeah. and say that you know. You know, I, I think you do that, that too. The, in our conversations with the, the driving factor of this is not your motels, your hotels, even your condos that the fishermen use, because those are great for our community. They bring in tourism, and that, that's what right. we want is to promote Algoma. But more of the, hey, I live on 5th Street, and the house next to me has now become a party house. And what do we do about it? You can only send the police there so many times because they're going to be gone in two days. Yeah. And now we've, you know, it's just that's what's we're that's what we're seeing happening in these small residential areas where now it's an Airbnb and or a VRBO or a short-term rental, um, and there's there's no guidelines for it. Quality of life. Kind of like your house is a lot of. Yeah. 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 You know, and then another thing that a lot of municipalities are doing is actually holding the property owner accountable. You know, right now, say there's a problem and the police department have to go to respond to a new noise ordinance, okay? The person that's renting it, they get their ticket or they get their warning, but the, the property owner is not having to take any responsibility. They just collect the money and... Uh, Isn't it like a slumlord? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, they don't care what's going on no. here. I live in Minnesota. I, I mean, there's some there's some great things. It brings a lot of people in the town. Um, yeah. The other thing is, is what about all of our people that have uh, residential properties and have been here for how many years? Is that what you know you want them to have to deal with? Yeah. Is four cars parked in the driveway starting up at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning to go fishing, or you know? Uh -huh. That's that's at, at one point there was a house for sale a year ago. They were advertising online before they even purchased the house that it sleeps twenty four people. <laughs> Is there a way, Aaron? Do you know um, to to try to compare apples to apples, like as opposed to what some of the bigger cities are doing? Like does. Does Kiwani have something in play or somebody that's similar to us so that we can when, kind of... When we, I think when I sent my question out to clerk, mm -hmm. clerk's list, I think I asked for municipalities this size okay. to be the driving okay. responders. Right. It's it's more of your big, big municipalities that are saying, nope, we're done. We're not having these anymore. Or it's the seven-day minimum or, you know, something. Or you can only rent it out days. so many days yeah. a year, a month, I whatever. Mistaken. I don't know that we have that big of a problem or that we have that big of a problem yet, but I definitely think it's something we should be putting on our radar to make sure we have under control so we don't turn into that. Well, I think- Because we still want this to be friendly on right. right? The mm -hmm. comment that comes up is as the houses go on the market and they're, and they're picked up right away and they're picked up for that reason. And they're paying big dollars for these houses. So the guy, person selling it, they could care less. Right. They're getting- Ten yeah. times what they're well, asking. I think it's really up to us to say what we want for this community. But I agree it's with Scott. I think we can do what's this. What's going on in other communities, yeah. regardless yeah. of their sizes? What do we want? Yeah. And we have to lay down what we want, and then we'll figure out how to put it into a resolution. 
I, mean, I think I agree with Scott. I think we can do it at the next finance okay. personnel. Or if you, if can, you get, can give us that outline. Yep, we'll try to kind of get a platform laid out of these are the questions where does the council feel or where do they line up and mm -hmm. in a little bit i just wanted to mention and like i said we could talk about this this for a long time um and jake you made a comment what do you do municipalities that have a lot of them right let's just say they have 70 of them and the council says we're going to have 40 of them what they do is they allow everyone to permit and they let them operate and they kind of have on the like two or three strike you're out business if you goof up okay we allowed everybody but now you goofed up you lose yours until they get down to that number where they want to be right and they don't permit them. and then they, they don't permit any new ones until they get down to that number Dave what what what, what kind of uh, are you getting calls on this stuff um, we haven't had a lot of calls what we've had is uh, um, they have like security systems that are and like when the cleaning people go in and they set off the alarm and we're going because they're, they've had people in it so now they're the cleaning people going and they've never had the code for the alarm that's basically the only one that I've ran on um, yeah, right now with it so, so. All right. you haven't had you haven't had the midnight bonfires uh, uh, right lighting the trees up in the backyard okay. oh. Gen generally speaking I mean I've, we've used these quite a bit personally when we travel and generally speaking the people that are using these it's you've got a profile um, they've got a profile they basically have the you can't just like if I go on and say I want to rent a house down in Florida for seven days or whatever I just don't get to put my credit card info and, and get granted like they have a process where they can do a background check like they look at it's not an immediate they have to accept it so generally speaking the people that are using these are not and they know that if there is any issues or problems that they're going to get a bad review from the person who is the owner and vice versa they could give the owner a bad review saying this place is a complete dump don't ever go there and then the problem solves itself but generally speaking i don't think the it's could it happen yeah but generally the people there's liability there where they don't want it to be an issue just as much as we don't so. so it sounds like what we need to do is set boundaries that's like yeah we're not looking to, i don't think to and, and i'm not asking the council how do we eliminate it i i think there's a lot of very good things about them and i think the clerk had mentioned aaron had mentioned um i mean there's kin sport fishing um they bring a ton of people into this city um that use them as part of their packages i think there's some fantastic things about them i think setting some boundaries to kind of you know so how far does this control. go where all some winter comes and we don't have anybody in the city because every one of our houses <laughs> is airbnb <laughs> well i think the other thing is too you'd like to know which houses are so that we can make sure we're getting our tax well, if there's a way with a permit who owns them and how do you contact them well, yeah. if they're residents or, or if are they second homes or are they actual first homes, I think that's an important distinction. Yeah. I've seen larger municipalities like Atlanta that requires uh, that you be a resident in, to rent them out. And it's, it's one thing if I have a house and I, the, what the short-term rentals were originally intended for was I'm going to be gone this week, you know, a little income in here not to make it a, a business. And I wouldn't want to deprive our residents of the opportunity to do that and I think that there might be uh, Give a good like yeah two pillars potentially even I'm, I'm not sure which one it is uh, there's a municipality and then you get into some like but there's a municipality I was just going through um, if their residents uh, if they're there for six months they can rent it out for six months they that's kind of how they stop the you can't just buy a property and rent it out mm -hmm. like if you come and stay there for two weeks well then you can rent it out for two weeks you can no, do an upfront percentage of the sale if you know it's, it's all be. over the board. You could do yeah. an annual yeah. fee. You could have an elevated yeah. fee if you are a re or non-resident versus a resident. I mean, yeah, I, I think. But That's why I said this is such a broad topic. Oh, yeah. We yeah. just wanted a little direction before we started putting things together, and now mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like, nope, that's not where we wanted to go with it. Not just sweep it under this right. rug. Yeah. And they again, rub. I don't think this is a money maker. This isn't a balance the budget, but this is a 
so we know who is registered, what is going on, and and if we do have problems, we know how to address them. I want to mention that I had called Matt because somebody that owns two of the properties in downtown Algoma called me and said they had one renter that wanted to do the whole thing and they were going to do the Airbnb, but it's a commercial property, so we we have to look at that too. Of saying you can't just all of a sudden take a downtown property and make it into a rental unit and that. I had one about two months ago that called me that owns some land. Um, just on the north side of Algoma, he wants to put four double wide trailers on his property so he can Airbnb them on an acre and a half property. <laughs> so, I mean, these are the, it's it's a hot market right now. Only if there's porta potties out in the front yard. Only <laughs> well, I mean, if there are porta potties so, outside. <laughs> that's what we will do. I will try to put something together right, for the next finance and personnel, and maybe we chew off half of it and we, you know, table it and give it another month. But if that's the wishes, that's all I was looking for. I don't need a motion or anything like okay. that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You can move. Okay. Agenda items for the next meeting, if you could get that to either Aaron or, or, or Matt. But, um, one of the items will be the fire protection on the next meeting. We're not discussing today at all. That's correct. Okay. Our next meeting will be July 18th at, at, six, at 6 6 o'clock due to staff availability. Okay. And it has to be on Tuesday? It doesn't have to be on Tuesday, but it can't be any earlier than 5.30 yeah. that whole week. Okay. Oh, what's going on? I actually, I have a yeah. county board meeting at the exact same time. <laughs> well, I'd like She's to be at this meeting. My schedules here. Yeah, it, Jesus, it, yeah. You're, just, nope. you're interrupting well, my nap time. It could be Monday, but it would have to be at that same six o'clock time because the Monday, have, Monday the same is fine with me, but but Tuesday, Tuesday does not work. Okay, let's go with the seventeenth then. Monday. Wait a while. Let me look at my calendar. Yeah. Keep it on Tuesday. Yeah, that that whole week I I have class. So Leave it on Tuesday. And I'm not done with class. Well, until call I have me class. when you have no class. Okay. So you knew that was seventeenth. I, I mean, I if everybody else can make it on that Tuesday, except you, Madam yeah. Mayor, then I guess Scott could chair the, the meeting yeah. if you're there. Yeah, well, I can do Monday. I'm a Tuesday. I'm a Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. I was just giving you a hard time. Can you have it as early as five? No. 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 Okay, so or six is early as it would be. Yeah, on okay. Tuesday. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to have it any earlier than, than six. Neither where it is. I'll have to work on my schedule and rearrange things. <laughs> So we're staying here Tuesday? So you're you're ready? Ready? Yeah. Tuesday at 6 p.m.? Okay. I, sure. Okay. I can do that. Okay. okay. Is there anything else to come before this meeting? Otherwise, I'd like a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. You can take a little bit of a break before you go into the next year. No, the right next one will move right along. Right, right along. Right into it? Okay. Yep. Okay, let's call the meeting to order. Okay. And we'll do a roll call of attendance. Mary. Here. Dashlet. Here. Gore. Here. Wayne Schmidt. Here. Swedberg. Here. Everton. Here. Ortlieb. Here. Kevin Schmidt. Here. Okay. This uh, meeting is in com compliance with the open meeting law. I'd like an approval of the agenda that was submitted. So moved now, Mayor. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the agenda is approved as submitted. New business. Uh, the liquor license and tempering license requests. Okay, so in front of you is the license request for 2023-2024. All renewal applications and new applications are for the period of July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024. 
we have 11 total applications for the combination Class B, Class B licenses. Currently, the city has 13, so that would mean we would still have two available. Um, I'm just going to run through it real quick so it's on record. Um, all of these were recommended for approval by the PPP committee at their meeting last week. Um, applications for renewal Class B beer license, Algoma Boat Club, Von Steel Winery. Application for renewal Class B winery, Von Steel Winery. No new applications for the Class B, Class B liquor licenses. Applications for renewal combination Class B and Class Class B beer and Class B liquor licenses. Anchors Away, Cafe Tolazzo, Leander's, which is also Pizza Bowl, Lori's Happy Trails, which is City Limits, Ghost Ship Restaurant, which is Son of Scallywag, Millie's Pub and Grub, RRP Management, LLC, which is Smashed on the Rocks, Rule Enterprises, LLC, which is Hotel Stebbins, Off the Hook, Bar and Grill, 311 Bar and Bistro, 322 Steel Street, LLC, which is also Ruse, Applications for new and or renewal combination Class A beer and Class A liquor licenses. A new one is KSF LLC. That is the Harbor Hut down by the marina that the Kins or KSF LLC owns. Um, James Graff, which is Graff Mobile, Jandu Oil has two of two of them. Both are for the BP stations in town. <coughs> town Grocers Inc., which is also Denny's. Applications for renewal Class A liquor licenses. That would be um, Steel Street Trading Company. And I apologize, the, the um, it should be class, the parenthesis, or not parenthesis, quotation, class A quotation. Um, not the way it's written on your memo. Applications for cigarette and tobacco product licenses are Family Dollar, um, Graphs Mobile, James Graf, Jandu Oil has two for the BP station, Lori's Happy Trail, which is um, City Limits, RRP Management, Smash on the Rocks, Hometown Grocers, which is Denny Super Value. Um, those are all renewal, no new licenses there. And then consideration of application for amusement, so that's amusement devices that they have in their establishments, Anchors Away, Leander's, which is Pizza Bowl, Lori's Happy Trail, City Limits, Millie's Pub, RRP, Smash on the Rocks, Rule Enterprises, Hotel Stebbins, Off the Hook, um, Algoma Boat Club, and 322 Steel Street, <coughs> which is also known as Ruse. And then finally, we have the application for the temporary Class B beer, Class B liquor licenses. Community Improvement of Algoma has one out for Shanty Days. Community Improvement of Algoma has another one out for Wet Whistle. The dates are listed. Concerts in the Park series at Heritage Park would be Friends of Crescent Beach, Algoma Area Chamber of Commerce, Algoma Library Friends, Algoma Boat Club, Art Beat, Kiwani, and Violence Intervention Project. Whew. Does anybody have any questions? Can you repeat those? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you Thank want to time me? <laughs> Thank you, Erin. I'll make a formal motion to approve all the business license requests as presented. Second. Can I add, okay do, it all, do it all together, including the new one? Yep. So it's, it's okay. everything as presented for the new and renewal business license. Correct. And Casey, go ahead. And uh, I'll be abstaining on 311 and go ship. Why? Okay. So business I have Scott okay. making the motion to approve everything for the business licenses as presented with Casey. Abstaining from 311 and go ship? Yes. Is that correct? Correct. You only do that for business if you do it for individuals selling your stuff. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Or a second. Oh, yep. Oh, My, motion by Scott, second by Midge. Um, and then roll call. Yep. Casey, I'll start with you if you just want to. Abstain. Uh, abstain from 311, go ship. But approve yes, the rest? Yes, approve the okay. rest. Yes. Thank you. Ortlieb. Yes. Kevin Schmidt. Yes. Swedberg. Yes. Dashlet. Yes. Maring. Yep. Wayne Schmidt. Yes. Memberton. Yes. Okay. Could I also get a motion to approve the temporary licenses? I'll make a motion to approve the temporary licenses. Second. Okay. Um, do you want to roll call on that? Did no. you want to roll call on that one? Well, I don't, we don't need one, but if you... Give me just... It can be one. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very none. That motion is approved. Next item is the Utility Commission appointment. Uh, the 
um, based, based on our last meeting and the vote, it will be Mr. John Cross. So you're looking to for a motion to approve to your recommendation, John Cross? Cross? John Cross, yes. I'll make that so motion. A motion. Motion by Lee. I'll second it. Second by Wayne. Okay. And do you want to do a roll call on, sure. on this? Sure. Mary. Yes. Dashlet. Yes. Wayne Schmidt. Yes. Kevin Schmidt. Yes. Maberden. Yes. Swedberg. Yes. Four. No. Fortlieb. No. All right. The yeses have it six to two. Okay. Then the next item is the benches at Peterson Park. Casey, you want to take that or? Sure. So the CFA will show us in order six benches to be placed in Peterson Park. Um, talked with our partner at meeting earlier, and their recommendation was to accept the donations on the bench uh, with the situation basically myself and Mike and anybody else on the committee that has an input of where to place them. Um, our responsibility would be basically just to install them. If they want to accept donations for these benches and the memorial bench, they can do that. Um, we would order the plaque and just take whatever that plaque costs and then they would cover the rest. So a little back history, this is, um, so everybody knows, is the CIVA is donating um, benches at $600 a piece and everybody's looking like why is this here okay um, we have an overwhelming amount of people donating benches on the beach and everybody wants a bench on the beach um, so we've kind of put try to get people that want a memorial bench on the beach to kind of donate towards other things um, last big thing was the <coughs> pavilion there was a lot of donations people went to the pavilion and Casey put together kind of a big placard um, with a bunch of names on it I think there's what six on there six. Uh, different people that donated money towards that so we felt like because the CIVA wants to donate something it, that and what it's for is that more or less the council is accepting the donation from the CIVA to put to install these benches um, for Peterson Park is what it is and they can be memorialized whenever the the CIA of a would if somebody wanted to put a placard on them they're six hundred dollars a bench they would take three hundred dollars to help more or less give to the CIA of a and then we would put a placard on it and make it a memorial bench but we also stipulated at our meeting that we might look at Perry Field yes, besides correct. Peterson Park yeah Perry so. yep any talk of maybe adding additional benches in the downtown area with those metal ones? Not yet. Um, one of the other things we did too is we are on the picnic tables, so we are accepting donations on those as well. To where you're getting a bigger plaque, where it'll be basically embedded on the top of the picnic table, so we don't have a whole lot of interest in those yet either. So okay. I, think really I was just curious that the parade Memorial Day, it's something that popped into our head while we were walking down there. I'll uh, not to get off on a go down that rabbit hole. I'll make a motion to accept as presented. Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Hearing none. That motion is approved. Okay. The next item is the five-year capital improvement plan. I'll make a formal motion to move forward with resolution 1166-2023. I'll second that. items for our next agenda be sure to get them to either Aaron or Matt to get on the agenda our next meeting will be July 10th at 6 p.m. here at City Hall and before we leave I'd like to talk about the Viking cruise a little bit <laughs> go ahead okay um, 
on, on Friday, the Viking Cruise was here, and um, they presented the city with this, and it's very, very nice, which is going to sit at City Hall. Um, everything about the event is very, very popular. I've, I got emails from the person that was in charge of the whole cruise saying that for the first time in history, she never got any negative comments. Everything coming from Algoma was positive. And she was very excited about that. And, and the people from Milwaukee that were taking care of all the plans of what the people were doing told me personally, too, that they were so excited about how happy everybody was. And they look forward to continuing working with Algoma. So I, I think we need to be proud of all the volunteers and workers and everybody that were down there helping out. And I know many of the people in this room were there a good share of the day helping out. And we appreciate that. And, we look forward to next week, Thursday, when they come back. There is something tomorrow, tomorrow though. We have another <laughs> so cruise coming tomorrow. tomorrow? <laughs> That's, uh, there's a cruise coming tomorrow. They will be in port at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. This is not a Viking cruise ship. This is a second um, cruise ship that reached out to us. Um, they kind of were on the fence, coming, not coming, coming, not coming. I think last uh, Tuesday, they decided they were for sure coming. Um, we reached out to the chamber. The chamber was able to put a kind of a staff together. Um, there's about 175, I think. 140, 150 um, that will be coming on shore for this uh, cruise. And they booked with the city for tomorrow and the date in October. I don't have it right off the top of my head, but early October. So, do you know, Matt, if this one is planning the tours, the bus tours too? They, or they do. More we're not sure where they're going, but they do have a couple. They have three buses coming, leaving at 9:15, and 9:45, I believe, and then they'll return at one ish, and then they have two more that'll leave at like two o'clock. And then they will; those two will return at roughly 5:30, I believe. And then um, last tender leaves at 5:30. Ships will stay up at six. But, and this one is about half the size uh, 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 of the Viking. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, so 140, lower 100 crew and 140-ish passengers. So there was going. Mm -hmm. There was tremendous feedback obviously yeah. from from the event on friday are we planning to do the same exact kind of welcoming with the volunteers and everything for each one well you can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink uh, this captain from this ship tomorrow is coming on shore he does want to do a, a exchange meet you know people here okay. on shore city staff um and i i can't beg people to come down to the marina and, and clap and wave to, you know as, as they come on shore but well, with the Viking, you know with the Viking this one is a different one I understand but yeah with the re the repetitiveness of the Viking cruise ship coming or <clears throat> is the plan to try and do the same type of thing yes okay. I, I don't know if the some of the businesses are doing the same thing though when we talked at the chamber deal the problem we got with this one it's on a Tuesday so I don't think the winery is doing entertainment. Yeah, yeah I don't they're think they're, they're going to have a band, band or anything yeah. like that. I saw something online saying they, they are, are going to. Band. Yeah, I saw something online okay. saying they are going to have a band at noon tomorrow. Okay. Well, that's I just good. saw that today. So yeah. they're very receptive. To it it, it, it went well Friday, actually. I thought it went very well. Um, what we were told from, you know, other ports that had cruises that the people that came off the cruise didn't spend a lot of money now I didn't follow them around to see what they spent but you know everybody the chamber um, it, you know they gave them a like a red tote or a red bag um, everybody that came back had stuff in it <laughs> so uh, like Jake's from California maybe they looted it all but <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 what I thought was hilarious was as uh, as Denny's restocked on their uh, spotted cow no. I mean, I a lot there, of that that left Algoma. There were Facebook <laughs> posts of guys walking down the street yeah. carrying cases of sc spotted so. cow. Well, they'll have their drink up. Before but they yes, the chamber dance. did a fantastic job, I think, Friday. They're going to kind of have the same setup tomorrow. And uh, there's some staff down there, some volunteers from the chamber, ambassadors from the chamber that will be helping out as well. What time is the captain? What time is it? What time is 9.30. We're looking to have him on shore. Okay. 
think the fire chief's going to be there. Okay, and one, I have one last comment to make before we adjourn. Um, the domestic abuse is having their smokehouse jamboree on the Legion Park on Saturday, and we are counting on the fire department doing the ball drop. This year, the ball drop sales are not going very well, so we have quite a few left. So if anybody is looking at buying one of those balls to see if we can win on Saturday, I have some, or so do several of the people in town are selling them. So. Can I mention this? Yes. Um, along as in the uh, 55th anniversary of Grandview Terrace, they're having an open house on Wednesday, July 12th, from 1 to 4, uh, with cake and refreshments. So if you haven't had an opportunity to see the Grandview Terrace they are it's a federal operated thing but it's still with the city so if you haven't been there take advantage of it to, um, I'm going to talk to Al if he can put this out for us so okay. thank you Madam Mayor okay. is there anything else anybody else wants to mention if not could I get a motion to adjourn so move second all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed hearing none we are well, my wife asked. Yeah.